Coming up on this tutorial, we're gonna be installing the German Performance Solutions upgraded thermostat. This is a full billet housing that won't crack along with a replacement OEM thermostat in it. And we're gonna go ahead and swap it into my car. So if you wanna know how to do this, stick around, we're jumping into it. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. As always, I'm Cameron. This is Odyssey 7 Owners. And on today's video, we're installing the German Performance Solutions Billet Thermostat housing along with the new thermostat, which is included in the kit when you get it. Some other things you're gonna need to buy, you're gonna need some crossover coolant pipe gaskets. You're going to need a third one that's for the middle of that crossover coolant pipe. So uh, I've already done quite a bit of prep work. You will need your supercharger removed for this. You will need your car in service position. If you don't know how to do either of those, check the pinned comment below the description. I've got links to videos on doing both of those. Now, as you can see, I've already got everything prepped and done. Uh, pro tip, if you've got a divorced setup for your cooling reservoir, you don't have to remove any of the hoses. You can just set it off to the side. So uh, as you can see, in service position, I've got my water pump pulley still attached with the belt. I don't think we're gonna need to re remove it. We'll see as we dive into it, but otherwise, uh, you can see down here some nasty cruddiness. You can see some leaking coolant because my housing is just shot. So yeah, that's a great time to replace this. And we're gonna go ahead and dive right into the DIY. Before you do anything, you need to get the car up on jack stands. Obviously, you have to remove the bumper, but while you're down there, you need to drain the engine coolant loop of coolant. Uh, on the C7, we have a nice nifty little screw there that you undo to drain everything. It's really easy to access once you have the bottom pans removed. So yeah, drain your bra engine of coolant, and then you can start with the engine stuff. After taking a look at things, I do think it's gonna be a lot easier overall to remove the water pump pulley. So we got the belt still attached, which makes it easy to crack these bolts loose. They're not on very tight. So once we get that loosened up, we're going to get a 16 millimeter socket and go down to the tensioner for the serpentine belt, loosen it up and pull that off. If you take this off completely, and this is a very good time to replace this, but if you take it off completely and you're gonna reuse this, mark the direction of this belt so you know how it goes back on there. I suppose I should tell you this, this pulley is held on by three M10 triple squares. Next, we need to loosen up this crossover pipe. Now, if you've never removed this, be very careful. They have a tendency to break. You're going to have to remove a tiny little screw on the bottom here. I think it's like a T15 or something like that. The correct one should pop up here if that's not correct. And then over here on each side where it connects to each head, there's two T30s that hold this in top and bottom. And when you go to take these out, be really easy. Use a hand tool and don't strip anything, especially putting them back in. You do not want to over tighten them because you can strip it out and and go into the block and that would be no good. So I'm gonna work on doing that and I'll show you how I pull this out once I get it loosened up. All right, so as I removed all the screws, the line or the pipe actually came out all on its own which is good for me. That makes my life easier, not having to struggle with this thing. Uh, also, it did start pouring out a good amount of coolant that was residual in the pipe. You can see I got some dripping on the floor there, uh, but uh, we've got that there. Do not disconnect it from each side of the actual radiator piping because those gaskets in there, if you remove those off, you need to replace those too. So now that we've got this thing loose, we can pull it back a little bit and just be gentle. You don't want this thing to snap, but we got plenty of room now to access everything we need to here on the thermostat. Also, while you're here with this out and you just get it out, go ahead and fish out all of the O-rings. There's one on each end and there's one that goes on that part of the pipe, but it usually gets stuck inside there. So you just have to fish it out usually, uh, but the one on each end, those look like this. And so go ahead and get those out and toss those so you can replace them. Next, we're gonna be removing the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven T30 bolts holding the thermostat to the engine. Now I've already gone through and loosened all of these with a hand tool. So now I can take my impact and just slowly pull these out. And you're gonna see they're covered in dried coolant because this thing has been leaking. Don't know if you guys can hear the rain here in my house. It is pouring, has been for a few days. Try not to drop any of these into the engine bay. And if you do, make sure you have a magnet on standby to fish them out. You can already see the thermostat wanting to loosen up, which I guess is a good sign. That means I won't have to fight with it. This one right here is a little tricky. It's at an angle and it's coming into contact with the fuel line here. So you want to be really careful as you 
sneak it past that. Okay, I should just be able to lift this out of here. We need to just be careful, make sure we don't get snagged on anything that can break as we remove it. I really don't want to have to remove that fuel line, which it doesn't look I'm going to. So, got this out of the way. And then the other thing we need to remove is that old gasket that's sitting there on the head. It's just kind of stuck there, so you should just be able to peel it right up. And we've got it out. Once you have it out, you want to take some time and really clean this up and like try and take your paper towel and wipe from the inside out so you're not putting dirt into your engine block, obviously. Um, I'm going to get a brass brush and really clean up this surface here. You don't need to pull the coolant out of the middle with like a vac tool or anything because that's going to stay in the engine. But I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up and then we'll work on reinstalling the thermostat. Just a little bit of prep work before we move the housing over to the car. It comes with its own screw to connect the crossover pipe to the billet aluminum housing. And this is a number two Allen, so super tiny. That's the one that I use right there. Take that out before you install the thermostat housing. As you're taking this over to the car, you see that gasket in there. Make sure you do not damage the gasket as you set it down. I ended up vacuuming the fluid out because when I clean it, I got a little bit of debris in there. So when you're cleaning, if you get debris in there, make sure that you clean it all out. So carefully position this into the engine bay. You might have to move a bunch of wires to get it in there and set it down till it's flush and set it up over all the bolt holes. Now, it's got that spring tension on the thermostat, so it might push against you a little bit, but just push down and you'll be good to go. All right, I went ahead and got the bolts started. I just got them all hand tight and I went from one side to the other, kind of tightening it like a drum to make sure that it tightens down evenly. You want to torque these only to nine Newton meters and do not over torque these guys. They do not take much. I'm going to go ahead and do this and uh, I'll get back with you. One thing, go back over everything twice because as you tighten it, they do have a tendency to loosen up. The next thing you wanna do is go ahead and install your replacement gaskets on the crossover pipe. And you just wanna get them in there, set them in there. Don't force them, don't damage them. They should just fit in there nice and snug. And then before you actually made it to the engine block, you want to grab, reach in, grab a little bit of coolant and rub the outside of the gasket there before you seal it to the engine block. We're gonna do that on both sides and then we're going to install the gasket here and I'll show you that. So I just realized something that makes my life more interesting. This is broken. There's supposed to be another part here, which I was really curious because that gasket barely sat on there, but I got a replacement, thank goodness. Uh, you can see there should be more to that pipe there. Um, now, I was kind of scared of this one because I tried to install this one uh, when I did my engine build and it didn't quite fit right. So I got no other choice but to give it a go. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna swap these out and see how it works. One hour later. Okay, finally, an hour later, got this thing replaced. Once we get it in there and you can see the remnants of a little bit of grease there, that slid right in, no issues. And then if I can get the camera down below, you can see that little uh, two Allen, I got that in there. That's the first bolt I put in. And so now I'm gonna go and get the other four T30s, the two on each side plugged in. Then I gotta connect a bunch of other hoses and uh, we'll get to finishing this job up. Okay, I got all four bolts in from each side of that coolant crossover pipe. I need to button up all the other things like the vacuum line and the uh, Coolant sensor, temperature sensor, those four bolts, the one the T30s on each end, they get torqued down to nine Newton meters and do not over torque those either. Okay guys, uh, that about wraps it up for this DIY. Button everything back up, put it together. If you have a divorce coolant loop, you got a big advantage here. Without even putting the supercharger on, you can go ahead and put a vacuum bleed tool on your coolant reservoir for the engine loop and you can pull vacuum, check the gauge. If it holds for 10 to 15 minutes or so, then you know you're good to go. Put the car back together, vacuum bleed afterwards. If not, if you don't have a divorce loop, then you gotta do it the old school way, which is put everything back together, pray, 
and then fill it with water or antifreeze and uh, check for leaks afterwards. So yeah, uh, shout out to Germaform Solutions. Those guys are awesome dudes. I know them personally, they're friends of mine and uh, they sent this out here for me to get this DIY video done for you guys. So thank you guys so much for that. If you wanna get one for yourself, there'll be a link to one in the pinned comment below as well as a link to other videos that are gonna help you guys accomplishing this task. As always though, if you have questions, just drop them in the comments below. Consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And if you wanna do the $5 a month paid channel membership, you get a bunch of extra perks there too. If you need questions answered about that, shoot me a message. But anyways, I will see you guys on the next DIY video.